assalamu alaikum everybody how are you all okay today i am going to start this new chapter uh that is related to the respiratory system uh one of the girls yesterday said that we do we have not done um anticoagulant drugs yet but i wanted you know uh it to have a break because we have just done cvs and now uh before i start drugs that are dealing with the anemia and blood so i want to have a break in between these two chapters the drugs that are the, this this particular chapter that is about the respiratory system it should be covered in two weeks let's say okay all right so let's start so today will be the introductory class related to the introduction to pulmonary disorders okay we'll just discuss a few disorders and then we'll call it a day so what's wrong with the respiratory system that we are going to discuss so you see we have asthma we have chronic bronchitis and rhinitis so in these disorders what's happening is the diameter of the airways decrease what airways we are talking about you see when we are talking about the airways if i go back here starting from the nasal cavity okay from the nostrils and then it's going all the way to your lungs all right see here okay <clears throat> so what's the goal you see when the effective diameter is decreased so obviously the goal would be to decrease the airway resistance by increasing the diameter of the bronchi or by decreasing the mucus secretion or stagnation in the airways at this level i assume you already know about uh the air passage how exactly air enters right but let's just say if you don't know so i have a mnemonic for that which is no problem let's let's take bba wait a minute let me write that for you that is aha uh -huh. no problem let's take bba so here we are talking about the air passage okay from n we have nose nostril to be specific then we have nasal cavity then we have pharynx then we have larynx then we have trachea then we have bronchus then we have bronchioles then we have alveoli which is also called the air sac okay so this is a kind of a tip to help you memorize the how exactly the air flows from one part to another okay let's move on so you see two things are there one is mucus that is creating hindrance other one is diameter of the bronchus okay all right so the first disorder we should talk about is asthma you all know what is asthma right asthma in simple terms whenever we see somebody who can't inhale properly we say the person has asthma right so yes that is true it is characterized by acute episodes of bronchoconstriction caused by underlying airway inflammation a hallmark of asthma is bronchial hyperactivity 
to numerous kinds of endogenous or exogenous stimuli. That means this stimulus can be within the body or it can be an outer agent, right? So in asthmatic patients, the response to various stimuli is amplified by persistent inflammation. So the next is antigenic stimuli trigger the release of mediators. If you remember, in the last semester, we talked about uh, these mediators. We talked about leukotrienes, we talked about histamine, we talked about prostaglandin 2, right? And uh, I don't know if you remember or not, but uh, we talked about it and we talked that these are the mediators, okay, which create the uh, inflammation, okay? All right. So anti antigenic stimuli, for example, a foreign agent is there in the body, okay? So because of it, uh, the release of mediators were there and the mediators, when they were released, they cause bronchospasmodic uh, response with smooth muscle contraction, mucus secretion, and recruitment of inflammatory cells such as, these are WBCs, right? Isidophils, neutrophils, and macrophages. This is the early phase response. Right, everybody? Okay. So what will happen later on? So late phase response, which may occur in hours or days, is an inflammatory response. The level of histamine and other mediators released from the inflammatory cells rise again and may induce bronchospasm. Eventually, fibrin and collagen deposition and tissue destruction occur. A smooth muscle hypertrophy occurs in chronic asthma. And when hypertrophy occurs, you all can easily relate, then it will be a severe problem for the person to breathe, right? Okay, then we have non-antigenic response, stimuli, sorry, stimuli, such as cool air, exercise, non-oxidizing pollutants. They can trigger non-specific bronchoconstriction after early phase sensitization. There is a test which, uh, which is done in the labs in the hospitals in order to diagnose asthma. So if you remember in last semester, we talked about the drug by name of methacholine, which is muscarinic agonist. Okay, so what do we do is this, that we ask the patient, okay, to inhale a small doses of methacholine. Now, if, if a person is healthy, he or she does not have any uh, problem of asthma, they will not respond to it. However, uh, the people who have this condition, they will start to develop, you know, twitching, the muscular, uh, the smooth muscle contraction would start to happen, okay? And in the lung profile, when it will be done, uh, so it will be easily shown that the people who respond to methacholine have asthma, okay? Uh, in order to avoid, uh, this is by the way one of the safest tests, and in order to avoid any, uh, and this, uh, the action of this drug goes away in let's say 15 minutes, okay? Uh, in order to avoid any, um, any uh, kind of an issue, okay? So what do we do is this, we can give bronchodilators to the people after having the test, okay? So they, they will resume breathing properly. Then we have, wait a minute. Then we have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which is also called COPD. Here, okay? All right. So when we talk about COPD, it has bron a chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Chronic bronchitis, as the name indicates, it is about inflammation of the 
uh, bronchus okay and emphysema is difficulty in breathing okay right. so chronic bronchitis is characterized by pulmonary obstruction caused by excessive production of mucus due to hyperplasia and hyperfunctioning of mucus secreting goblet cells sorry this causes a chronic two month cough so you see here i have uh, inserted this image here so you can see by the way this is the epithelial layer of cells okay and from starting from the nostril till the end okay the, our entire respiratory system has this layer of cells okay now if you look here it has cilia which would trap the dust particles and it has this goblet cell the goblet cells function is to release to secrete mucus okay so in this condition the mucus would be hyper released okay okay so chronic bronchitis is often induced by smoking or an environmental irritant then we have emphysema which is difficulty in breathing emphysema is a type of copd characterized by irreversible loss of alveoli due to destruction of cell wall and again emphysema is also caused by smoking uh, you see the tar develops okay and it leads to destruction of the alveoli you see within the alveoli within the alveoli sac wait a minute in my upcoming videos inshallah i will also talk more about it by the way here okay in the alveoli sac okay there are further compartments okay and these compartments actually get broken away because of which they get destroyed because of which the alveoli gets affected okay all right so emphysema is a type of uh, this leads to destruction of cell walls okay this decreases the surface area available for gas exchange like i said the cell walls are destroyed okay then we have a condition rhinitis okay so rhinitis is a decrease in nasal airway due to thickening of mucosa and increased mucus secretion if you look here i have tried to uh, insert a diagrammatic image of the symptom and these are very common i want you to search and tell me which scientist had the problem of rhinitis that's a very interesting you know story i really enjoy reading it okay so uh, runny nose okay sneezing watery eyes stuffy nose and one of a very 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 famous scientist had it rhinitis okay all right so rhinitis uh, we have talked about it rhinitis may be caused by allergy viruses vasomotor abnormalities okay you know all of already about allergy virus is very famous these days um, i don't need to discuss that we will though we will okay all right then we have vasomotor abnormalities so these are actually the environmental conditions uh, such as perfumes somebody had um, <clears throat> you know the mist here uh, maybe i am allergic to that okay and there are other conditions as well uh, for example there can also be hormonal rhinitis hormonal rhinitis can happen when a lady is pregnant or a lady is going through the menstrual cycle and it could also be triggered when a person is suffering emotionally and elderly people can have it with only the symptom of runny nose they might not have all of the symptoms they might just have a runny nose okay 
so that will also be characterized in the uh, this thing okay uh, vasomotor abnormality okay then we have rhinitis medicamentosa so this is a rhinitis caused due to excessive usage of decongestant okay so because of the medication person develops rhinitis uh, for the upcoming class you should recall adrenergic agonist is recall the spelling correct okay no it was correct sorry all right okay everybody so i want you all to uh, recall i want you to read through the entire chapter of adrenergic agonist which we covered up in the last semester because our upcoming lecture is totally focused on adrenergic agonists and how they're used to uh, treat uh, the respiratory disorders okay that is it everybody thank you so much